Uh, hi everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, series of uh, solving uh, electrical A6 PAO exam power systems and a machine and this question that we will have is about induction motors. This is a very typical question in the exam where you are given the model parameters and you are asked to find different things in your induction uh, uh, motor. Now this is basically the complete model of the uh, induction motor where this is represent your stator and this represent your rotor and this represent the air gap but most of the time as in this question rc is not given because it has a very very large value compared to xm so can be considered as an open circuit so that is the model that we will be uh, using here having said that let's go and start the question this is a three phase always the questions about induction motors comes in a three phase you are given the line to line voltage it's y connected 60 hertz six pole it's a wound rotor induction uh, motor has the following parameters you are given the uh, resistance the inductances of everything in the in the model now the rotational loss are assumed to be constant and this is the value of it now the rotation losses will include the mechanical losses plus the core the core which is basically in rc now because rc has been ignored it's lumped with the mechanical and all of them they are called rotational loss you are given the slip and then you are asked to find the following parameters we'll start with a the line current so the line current is basically the line current that is supplying the the uh, stator and because it's a y connection the line current and the phase current are exactly the same so your I1 is the phase voltage divided by the total impedance here, Z total, divided by Z total. Now this Z total, uh, uh, basically it is R2 over S JX2. So this is in series in parallel with this and everything is in series. So let's start one by one. So R2 over S, and the question is why we divide R2 by S? The reason we do that because uh, the frequency of the rotor is different than the frequency of the stator. The induced voltage in the rotor is different. And because of that difference in the frequency to do the uh, basically the matching in the frequencies we have to divide r2 over s this is in brief of course there is a derivation for that but at that stage you don't need to to know much about it so this is equal to 0 0.079 divided by s which is 0 0.033 the 3.3 percent and this give me 2.39 ohm this is your r2 over s so R2 over S plus this one. Now we will find Z1. Your Z1 is basically the 2.390 ohm plus J 0.186, which is the uh, inductance of X2. This is in parallel with your J 7.5. Now they are in parallel so basically your z1 is equal to the multiplication of these two uh, numbers 2.39 plus j 0.186 times j 7.5 divided by the summation of both 2.39 plus j 0.186 plus j 7.5 now, if you do all the calculation, you will find this is equal to 2.23 angle of 21.72, which is equal to 2.07 plus J.83. Now, this is your Z1. Your Z total will be uh, basically the summation of 0.1 plus j 
0.205, which is basically the impedance of the stator plus the 2.07 plus J.83. And this will give me uh, a value equal to 2.17 plus J.83. 1.035 and this will be equal to 2.4 angle of 25.5 so we found the total z so your current i1 is the phase voltage now this is a y connected so basically you have to divide this by root 3 to find the phase voltage angle of 0 divided by the total impedance which is 2.4 angle of 25.5 and this will be give me 115.47 angle of minus 25.5 amp and of course it's minus because now the current lags the voltage and the power factor is a lagging power factor because we have an inductive load so everything is matching so this is your point one now Let's find the stator cover loss, which is part B. The P stator cover loss is equal to I1 squared times R1, but this is a three phase, so we multiply it by three. This is equal to three times 115.47 squared times 0.1, and this will give me four kilo kilowatt so this is part p now let's go for part c the air gap power now before we solve this part to find the air gap power we need to understand basically the power flow inside the induction induction so let's let's see how we can uh, basically understand understand that so we'll start from pn this is your BN, your, this is your input power, which is root 3 V line I line cosine theta. So that is, is your input power. Then you will have here PSCL. We subtract from it the power in the stator, which is 3 I1 square R1. We just calculated that. Now, if you subtract then you, uh, the two together, PN minus PSCL, this will give you the air gap power, PAG. But PAG also is equal to 3I2 square times R2 over S. So it has two formulas, this formula and that formula. And you can use either and you will get the same answer, very similar answer, very close for the both of them. Then you come and you take from this your P rotor cover loss, which is 3I2 squared times R2. So if you subtract this together from uh, PRCL, PR, or P air gap minus PRCL, so this power from this losses, you get what we call B developed or B convert sometimes, this is the same thing. Now, you can see here PAG is equal to 3I2 square R2 over S. So it means that your P cover loss is equal to S times PAG. So if you multiply uh, S in the PAG, you get the P cover loss in the rotor. And this will lead to that, this is PAG, minus S P A G. So this is equal to one minus S times P A G. So you can find the developed power using uh, this formula or using that formula. Again, both will give you the same thing. Then you there is the P rotational. And if you subtract the P developed minus the P rotational, you will get your P out. So that is the total power flow. I have a video describing all these formulas. I will uh, share it with you in the, uh, in the video uh, description. Okay, so to find the PAG, we have to start from finding P, uh, PN. So the PN 
is equal to root 3, V line, which is given to us as 480. I line, we already calculate that because the line current and the phase current in the Y connection is the same. So it's I1 basically. So it is 115.47 times the power factor, which is cosine of theta V, which is zero, minus the angle of the uh, current, which is minus 25. 0.5 and you do the calculation this is equal to 86.648 kilowatt that is your pn then your pag is equal to the pn the 86.648 as mentioned here minus prcl which is the 4 kilowatt and this will give me 82.648 kilowatt that is basically your pa pag now we fi we finish this 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 now we want to find the rotor cover loss now there are two different ways to find the rotor cover loss i will show you both ways now we are we want to solve for this this is part d one way is to find i2 here now using current division we can find i2 so your I2 is equal to your I1 times J 7.5 divided by J 7.5 plus the summation of these two impedances, okay, which is basically that uh, the J 0.186 plus the 2.39. And if you do that, we know I1, we can find everything. This is equal to... Uh, 107.58 angle of minus 8.23 then your p r c l is equal to 3 times this current square times the resistance which is r2 which is 0 0.079 and this will give me 2.743 kilowatt also, you can say that this is uh, equal to S times PAG, which is 0 0.033 times 82.648, where you get exactly or very close to this, around 2.7 something. So it is very, very close to each other. So I think something like that. Okay. So I will use this value from now on. Okay. So this is the cover, uh, rotor cover losses. We want to find the mechanical developed torque. Now let's go back here. We have the developed power. Then from the developed power, we can find the developed torque. So what is the developed power? P developed is equal to PAG minus PRCL, which is equal 82.648 minus 2.743 and this will give me 79.9 kilowatt again uh, b developed is also equal to 1 minus s p a g so we can calculate without the need of p r c l and also we get we'll get the same the same thing okay so this is your p developed now we have a relationship that relate the electrical power to the mechanical power which is p is equal to torque times omega this is the electrical power and this is the mechanical power so now we want to find the torque that is developed so you divide the p that is developed divided by omega what omega omega m the rotational speed now we don't have yet omega m we need to find omega m how to find omega m first we need to find ns ns is equal to 120 times uh, f divided by p what is ns is the same current speed this is the speed of the rotational of the magnetic field this is a constant speed doesn't change so this is equal to 120 times uh, 60 divided by 6 which give you 1200 rpm so nm the mechanical speed is related to ns by 1 minus s times ns the slip 
And always in M is a little bit less than in S, so it's 1 minus 0 0.033 times in S, which is 1200, and this will give me 1160.4 RPM. So we found uh, uh, in M, your omega M is nothing but 2 pi over 60 times in M. This is your omega Omega. So now we can find our developed torque. We are at this uh, stage. Now we found the developed power. We already found the developed power. Now we need to find the developed torque, the torque that is developed. Okay. So here we find, want to find the mechanical developed power is this. This is the mechanical developed. This is the B developed. Now we want to find the developed torque, which is the P developed divided by omega M, which is equal to 79.9 times 10 to the power 3 divided by 2 pi over 60 times 1160.4, and this will give me 657.5 Newton meter. So we found the mechanical developed power and the mechanical developed torque. Both are related to each other. Then we need to find G, the shaft torque. Now, the shaft torque is different than the developed mechanical torque. Okay, what's the difference between the two? This is, comes from the developed power. This is the power before you subtract from it the mechanic or rotational losses. So the shaft torque comes at the output. So I need to find P out which is equal to P developed minus P rotational, which is equal to the 79.9 minus the rotational loss, which is are given here 2.95 kilowatt. And this will give me 76.95 kilowatt. This is your P out. And from P out, we can find the output torque. The shaft torque is the output torque, which is P out, again, divided by omega M, which is 76.95 times 10 to power 3 divided by 2 pi over 60 times the, uh, the speed, which is 1160.4. And this will give me a total torque 63.3. 2.5 newton meter. That is the torque that is available at the shaft of your motor. This is the output output torque. Finally, we want to find this is your edge, the efficiency, which is basically your P out over P in. At this stage, we did we found everything. This is 76.95 divided by 86.648, and this will give me 88.8%. .8 so this is a very typical induction motor question that has different things and you will see a couple of questions in the exam and we are all almost uh, the same.